and blessed be the kingdom, now and ever forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Joshua said to the people, 
You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, And put away the foreign gods and our money, and, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people of that day, and made statutes and orders for them that shall the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the portion of Psalm 78 in your bulletin by whole verse responsibly. I will read the odd verses. Hear my teaching, O my people, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in the prayer. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will look down to generations to come, praise for the peace and the power of the Lord. And the eternal works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel which he commanded them to teach their children. So that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will be by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come out to meet him. 
and all those bridesmaids got up and put in their lamps. The foolish said to the wives, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. <coughs> While they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep away, therefore, for you may never know the day nor the hour. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Christ. of eschatology according to Merriam-Webster. Two things. One, a branch of theology concerned with the final events of the history of the world or humankind. Two, a belief concerning death, the end of the world, or the ultimate destiny of humankind. Specifically, any of various Christian doctrines concerning the second coming, the resurrection of the dead, and the last judgment. So why did Jesus choose this story to warn his followers to be prepared for the day of judgment? In Jesus' time, young couples would not go away for a week-long honeymoon Instead, they would stay at home. I think we call those staycations these days. And would have a sort of open house for their friends. Everyone treated the couple as though they were royalty. And it was simply a giant party, similar to the story of Jesus' first miracle at the wedding of Cana. But before the actual wedding occurred, the maidens kept the bride company outside of the groom's house as she waited for him to arrive. They bring lamps to use while they waited because they were not allowed in the streets at night without light. Because the groom could come at any time, even at night, they had to stay alert and wait. No one knew exactly when he'd arrive. Unlike today, here in the Western world, they didn't print invitations and invite people to come at a precise time for the wedding. It happened whenever the bridegroom arrived. I bet that drove a lot of brides crazy. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, or it could be next week. When the bridegroom approached, a messenger would go out into the streets and declare, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Then the maidens would accompany the bride into the house for the wedding ceremony. 
and the week-long celebration that followed. There was only a small window of opportunity to walk through the door into the house, because once the wedding began, no one else was allowed to enter. In other words, it wasn't possible to be too early, but it was definitely possible to be too late. You couldn't just walk in and find a seat at the back once the door was shut because it would be closed tight and it wouldn't be open again until after the celebration. I think fraternities do this sort of thing in today's colleges. What would I know? So what was the hidden meaning in this parable? The parable includes a number of hidden and symbolic meanings. Scholars generally recognize that, and here's your list, the bridesmaids are the church that is waiting for the second coming. The bridegroom is Christ. The wedding feast is the great and joyous occasion in which Christ comes for his church. The marriage supper of the Lamb, Revelation 19, 9, and the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. The delay of the bridegroom corresponds to the delay as we wait for the second coming. The bridegroom's arrival in the dark of night is the second coming itself. And the closing of the door is the final judgment. So, as was the case with almost all of Jesus' parables, those that heard it actually had a cultural point of reference that made it come alive for them. If they were able to grasp the hidden meaning of the parable, then they would have immediately grasped the point, the importance of preparation. Matthew's Gospel was probably written around 50 years after the resurrection of Christ when the early church was struggling to comprehend this extended time interval between the first coming and the second. All those who were alive at the time were convinced that Jesus would return while they were still alive. People today are equally convinced that they are witnessing the end of the world as we know it. And I actually get slightly annoyed at the commercial on TV for the book by the Reverend Dr. David Jeremiah who essentially says that the rapture is coming any day now. I think he just wants to sell books. This has been the mindset since about 10 minutes after Jesus ascended into heaven. And as exciting a prospect as that may be to some, I'm sorry, but it reeks of hubris to assume that the end of the world will happen while we are alive. But who knows? And just as the parable today indicates, we have no idea when it will happen, so we absolutely need to be prepared, because it could. Whereas all of the followers of Jesus assumed that he would return in their lifetimes, some of the early ones were dying off, and Jesus had yet to return. Perhaps some were even starting to lose hope, just like some of my evangelical friends on Facebook are today. Most, however, are absolutely convinced that Jesus is coming very soon, and he isn't going to be very happy not with the state we have gotten ourselves into. Some scholars suggest that Matthew uses today's parable to remind the church 
that the end will eventually come, and when it does, it will be sudden and not when we're expecting it. As for the shut door at the wedding feast, you have to be prepared before it closes. Because you won't be able to run out at the last minute and try to make peace with God when you see that the end is actually upon you. One of the strongest emotions we feel at a funeral is regret. In particular, this sense of regret is even more pronounced when the death is a sudden one. We're often remorseful that we didn't have the chance to say the things we wanted to say to the person, and now it's too late. The door has closed. That type of feeling is what Jesus is trying to prepare us for when he tells this parable. Today's gospel is all about being alert and prepared. And as the church year winds down, it is a precursor for what the entire season of Advent is all about. Waiting in expectation, preparing, making ourselves and our souls ready. The parable of the ten bridesmaids tells the story of a group that is waiting for the wedding feast to begin. Five are properly prepared, five not so much. When the groom does not arrive at the expected time, the five who are not ready rush out to purchase more oil for their lamps. By the time they return, it's too late. As Christians, as Episcopalians, we absolutely believe that Jesus will come a second time. And we must be prepared. How so? We must be spiritually ready. The responsibility for our preparation lies entirely with us. It cannot be bought or obtained without some effort. Jesus is calling us to invest in our eternal future. Many years ago, and I mean many, I attended a pre-Lenten retreat in Long Island. Are you in Long Island or on Long Island? Never did solve that question. The speaker was a Methodist pastor and a professor from Duke University. He was giving a presentation on the ever-increasing level of secularization in the world in the 21st century. He asked the 60 or so clergy that were there, how many of you have said thank you for the people coming at the end of the Sunday service as they file out the door? Most of us shyly put up our hands. He then asked, when did we start thanking people for investing in their own eternal salvation? Controversial? Perhaps. But he made his point. It's up to each of us to be responsible for our own spiritual well-being. I'm happy to help. If you have any questions, I hang around for a while after the service. I'm happy to answer them. Advent is coming. And there is a time, was a time, when Advent was as penitential a season as Lent. And although I certainly do not expect you to adopt the type of discipline that Lent calls for, perhaps this year we can start by saying the daily office from our prayer book. Or perhaps we could just pick up a Bible and read Scripture every day. This is called Lexio Divina. Father Mike is an expert on Lexio Divina. And I am speaking for him. I didn't ask him. But I'm pretty confident that he would be willing to give you a few pointers if you ask. 
Some of you use the forward day-by-day booklets. As for a sense of urgency, Jesus warned us through his own words, keep awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. That ought to be enough to help us avoid the shut door when the feast begins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Bay 
Makambi, a Anapola. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Christ Church, Whitefish Bay. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Mark and Lisa Aliyahu. We pray for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Luana and Tanzania. We pray for our covenant parish, St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church, their clergy and parishioners. We pray for those who are unemployed, they may find jobs. We pray for those in the armed forces, especially those in great danger, that they may find peace and be brought home safely and safely. We pray especially for those in the Ukraine and in Israel. We pray that Garrett might make it out of Israel. And we pray for the Shia. Lord, in your mercy. You are our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of their salvation. We pray especially for Mary, Jeanette, Barbara, Ruth, Lee, Craig, June, Daisy, Rita, Marianne, Manfred, Margaret, and Steve Elliott. We commend to your mercy, all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Grace, Paul, Paulette, Jerry, Skip, Egan Wally, Marshall, Muriel, Albert, Rosemary, Bill, Esther, Zachary, Mary, Virginia, Alfred, Edward, and Richard. And those who either add either silently or alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Thank you, David. Anthony. 
I invite all of you to All Saints Cathedral this afternoon. My 21 piano and voice students will present a concert. The first one is at 2 to 2.30, and the second one is from 3 to 4. So I invite you to come to All Saints and uh, support these young people in their study of music. I have students that have been studying with me for about the four years. And then, at 5.30, a periodic mom, an ensemble local ensemble in residence at All Saints Cathedral, is going to sing Compton, candlelight Compton, at 5.30. It's about a 30 to 40 minute sung meditative service. So let's go out to the cathedral this afternoon in the community. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
of Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, the bread of heaven.
eternal God of Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.